one single event really where I was on a yacht out on the rip, out near the rip, and uh, we sailed far too close to a ship. And it was a terrifying and beautiful experience, you know. It was a very big part of my life at the time. The paintings that, with that body of water are really about that event. I thought I was gonna die. <laughs> Ships are big and, you know, boats aren't. That bit, of, that bit of water that lies in between Queenscliff and Portsea includes the rip, but it has these other areas there. There's sort of places like Nepean Bay and Waruna Bay and Ticonderoga Bay all on the eastern side and Lonsdale Bay. But they're all names which, just, which float around in the water on a map and describe a place that's been a happening place for me for a long time. All sorts of things go on in that body of water, even on a work day going on the ferry. In fact, it's the best bit. Sometimes I go to Melbourne by getting on the ferry and going round to Geelong and driving up to Melbourne that way just so I can get a boat trip across the rip on the way. I'm in the habit of drawing when I feel like it. That might be at home in the morning, at home in the evening, at home at lunchtime. I've got sketchbooks everywhere. I'm looking forward to a day sometime in the future where I'm going to get them all together and look through them all. I love making floral paintings, still lives, interiors. I like employing a lot of wallpapers. I was really lucky recently to find a guy who keeps stock of uh, William Morris wallpapers and I bought a couple of rolls and I've been employing that stuff. And flattening them is what's important to me, turning, getting them as near to an abstract painting as I can, but still hanging on to a subject. The linear perspective is a trick, it's a gimmick. So that painting with the, the two ships facing each other and there's a smaller boat like a motorboat in the foreground. They're all different sizes, but they're all flat on the surface. But we know, because the brain knows, that in the distance is a headland. But it's only a, there's no help in gaining that information beyond just our knowledge. They're flat, in other words. They're, it's like something's behind it, pushing it all onto the front of the painting, onto a plate of glass or something like that. You can manage to bring a kind of sense of depth just by the size of things and where they're positioned on the, on the painting. Bronzes fascinate me. I just, I, I love their weight. You know, I love the fact that you only have to touch them once to know how heavy they are and it changes the way they look. I've been out at Billy Perrin's foundry in Cheltenham working with him on some bronzes. I've just tried to bring those parts of painting that I use to the sculpture, which essentially are utilitarian objects that aren't necessarily a floral, but could be seen as a floral cavity or something like, like chip baskets and stuff like that in there. And also shapes that I've made out of balsa wood and wax that they look like they've come out of an engineering workshop, and, but they are in fact describing a vase of flowers and that contrast interests me. Big paintings have more impact all those small paintings, which I also make. I love the quality. The quality of a small painting is essentially that it's going to be able to, I call them library paintings. It can be in someone's life in a much sort of quieter way, on a shelf somewhere. Big paintings are on a wall, you walk into a room and there it is. Small paintings can be hiding in a corner and they're quite a, they're a lovely surprise.